Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to go over some details surrounding the original Jurassic Park. If we go over the layout of Isla Nublar way back in 1993, we can get a relatively accurate depiction of what John Hammond's initial vision really was. During the events of the first movie, Dr. Hammond had quite a lot of paddocks set up for new dinosaurs, and some of those dinosaurs were indeed in the park itself during the on-site inspection that we all know went horribly wrong. Others were supposed to have been added a little while after the grand opening was going to take place. So in this video, I wanted to go over the list of animals that he was going to exhibit in Jurassic Park. The information that I'm going to be citing is coming from four sources. First and foremost, the Jurassic Park brochure that can be seen on screen in the first movie. Second, the list of animals recorded on the DPG website. Third, the embryo tanks that we saw Nedry visit during the midpoint of the film. And lastly, the creatures that we observe in the 2011 video game by Telltale. Now, if we just watch the first movie and don't take anything else into consideration, we can confirm that at least seven dinosaurs were going to be planned for the theme park. These are, in order of appearance, Brachiosaurus, Parasaurolophus, Velociraptor, Dilophosaurus, Tyrannosaurus rex, Triceratops, and Gallimimus. But the fun doesn't just stop there because there were, of course, other dinosaur pins that we can look at if we check out the brochure that Grant uses to get back to the visitor center. And those other dinosaurs include the following. Baryonyx, Metriacanthosaurus, Segisaurus, Proceratosaurus, and Herrerasaurus. Now, the Procerato and the Metria are actually interesting to note because we also get to see them make appearances as embryos in the movie during the heist scene. So with Paddock's being built on the island and a small name cameo being in the first film, it's kind of hard to question whether or not they would have been intended for Jurassic Park. InGen definitely had plans for them. And speaking of the DNA that we see in the embryo storage room, there are actually a few other species we need to take note of as well. Stegosaurus is an animal that we don't see on the brochure and also don't get to see in the first movie, but it would pop up walking around on Isla Sorna in the Lost World. This means that Stegosaurus was more than likely going to be pushed out to park guests during a second or third wave of new animals that would have been brought over once Jurassic Park was supposed to begin expansion. Or, it may not have even been intended for the Nublar Resort. Keep in mind, we also see that other places like Jurassic Park Europe were going to be planned to open as well. Now, apart from the Stegosaurus, other embryos are listed by the DPG for the Corythosaurus and Comsignathus. However, these dinosaurs don't show up until later in future installments like the Stego. And with that out of the way, we really need to discuss some of the species that show up in the 2011 Jurassic Park Telltale game because in all honesty, they happen to be the ones with quite a lot of complexity woven into their backstories. Now, while not everything within this adventure game can be taken at face value, some stuff does appear in hard canon seen in newer movies, with Mount Sebo being the main example. So while we don't have any real confirmation of these creatures ever being intended for exhibition in the first movie, we should still acknowledge the information in the game as something that could be important at some later date. Of course, I'm talking about the Troodons and Tylosaurus that were introduced to in the video game. The first of which was actually said to have been taken off of Engine's list by request of John Hammond himself after they found out how dangerous the Troodons would be in the park. So if this actually came to fruition, then yeah, we shouldn't see any acknowledgement of it in any park brochure or embryo storage whatsoever. The second animal is a bit trickier to talk about, because while it's made explicitly clear that the Tylosaurus was a Mosasaur that was being kept secret in the company, there was still an entire marine exhibit that got built on the island to accompany the gigantic beast. Whether or not it was supposed to be intended for Phase 2 as far as hard film canon goes, I don't really know right now. But, its appearance in the game shouldn't be taken lightly. Finally, the appearance of the Jurassic Park 3 Pteranodons in the 2011 game happened to be the weirdest addition in my personal opinion, because this is the variant of the species that we're led to believe was trapped inside of the aviary on Site B all the way up until Amanda Kirby accidentally let them out in the third film. So maybe that's a part of the game that just makes no sense. However, one interesting thing to say about Pteranodons in Jurassic Park 
is while they aren't shown in the brochure or in any of the embryo storage units, there actually is evidence in the first movie that suggests that they were going to be incorporated into Nublar at some future point. During the lunch scene, we get to see concept art of an aviary displayed on one of the projectors behind Hammond in Jurassic Park. So there actually is something of a hint towards their inclusion being planned as far back as 1993. It's hard to say what would have been there when the park officially opened, but as far as bona fide evidence goes, we have 12 species on the brochure that were going to be in the park, as well as some unconfirmed appearances from the 2011 Telltale game. Dinosaurs like the Stegosaurus could have been planned for the Nublar Resort, but we also have to remember that originally, Hammond had planned to open up other resorts like Jurassic Park Europe as well. So who knows where all of the dinosaurs on Sorna would have eventually ended up. Anyways guys, what are your thoughts on the dinosaur choices InGen made for the Nublar Resort? And what kind of dinosaurs do you think the other resorts would have had? Do you think that all of the animals on Site B would have eventually been incorporated into Jurassic Park? Or do you think that they would have divvied them up amongst the other resorts around the world? Whatever your thoughts and opinions may be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I want to thank all of my game wardens as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Casey Morris and Mark Horton, words can't really express how awesome it is to have you guys tell me how much you enjoy the stuff I do, and I seriously am extremely thankful for everything that you guys do to help. Honestly, it means the world. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and hope that you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, Take it easy.